Hi there. Today we're going to be doing the last um, section of Chapter 8, 8.8, .8, and it is talking about exponential growth and decay. Um, in the previous lesson, we learned about exponential functions, and so this is one of the most practical ways that we can apply um, exponential functions uh, is with using exponential growth and decay. So first we're going to start with growth. And you will recognize the formula here, y equals a times b of the x from the last section, of course, a being larger than zero. And in this case, we call it growth. Um, it's the same formula for growth and decay. Um, and the only thing that really makes a difference is this b here, which you'll notice over here, it says b is larger than one. And again, um, I've written that here. It is color coded. So a is going to represent the starting amount. Um, of whatever you're dealing with, whether it be um, some kind of a chemical or money in an account. Um, it's going to be the starting amount, and, and that is going to be growing, hence exponential growth, exponentially. It's going to be growing exponentially. Um, B represents the base, which, if it's growth, is going to be greater than 1, and we call that the growth factor. And then, of course, X being the exponent. So we're going to get right into this, and we're going to start with um, an example here. and. Lots of words going on here, but here we go. It says, since 1985, the daily cost of patient care in community hospitals in the United States has increased about 8.1% per year. In 1985, such hospital costs were an average of $460 per day. Write an equation to model the cost of hospital care. So to do that, we have to kind of go back to our y equals a times b to the x, and I'm just gonna kind of rewrite it here. And we need to have a starting amount. Um, and we saw earlier that we start with x equal to 0. But basically, in this case, we're starting with 1985. And our starting amount, in this case, is going to be um, the $460. Um, and we know that because we're starting in 1985. As you can see here, it says 1985. And here it says that in 1985, the hospital costs were $460 per day. So that tells me that A is $460. That's how much we were going to start with. I and mean, then it's been growing since then. Um, and it's been growing by a factor, it's increased here, by a factor of 8.1% per year. Now, be careful. To get your, to get your um, growth factor, you actually have to start off with 100% and then add the 8.1%. So to get our B, which is our growth factor, we're going to take 100% and we're going to add the 8.1%, which is now going to give us 108.1%. And if you move that decimal twice over, or basically divide by 100, the actual B value is 1.081. Um, so again, I just want to be clear that um, to get the growth factor, you start off with the 100% and you add the amount that it's increasing, 8.1%, and that gives you 108.1%, but that is a percent. So to put it into the formula, you have to convert the percent to a decimal, and so you want to move the decimal two units to the left, and that's how I get the 1.081, or you could choose to take the 108.1 and divide it by 100. That would give you the same amount. So here we're gonna go, 460 was my A value, now I know that B is 1.081, and that's consistent with what we said earlier about the growth factor being larger than 1. 1.081 is, in fact, larger than 1. So now my equation is going to be Y equals my A value times my B value, which is 1.081, to the X power. And X is going to represent the years, and we're going to assume that in 1985, we'll call that year zero, okay? Um, so that when we get to part B, it says use your equation to approximate cost per day in 2000. What we have to do is how many years after 1985 is the year 2000? So you have 85, 95, and then five more years is 2000. So basically, that means that X is 15. It is important that you not plug 2000 into X. Um, X is the um, number of years after 1985, so 15. So um, if X is 15, we're just going to plug into our equation here, and I'm going to get Y equals 460 times 1.081 to the 15th power. 
And again, we talked about this in the last section, you don't want to multiply 460 times 1.081. You want to do exponents first. So 1.081 raised to the 15th power is 3.217. So now I'm basically taking my 460 and multiplying it by 3.217. So I move that by 460, and I actually get 1,479.6. Running out of space there. But um, that is basically the hospital costs. Went from being $460 per day in 1985 to $1,479.6 um, in 2000. The year 2000. So we have an example for you to try here. Um, in this case, you're supposing your community has 4,512 students this year. Um, the student population is growing 2.5% each year. They want you to write an equation to model the student population, like I did in the previous example. And then what will the student population be in three years? That's where you use on the Part B to predict the future. All right. So the next thing that we need to talk about is this idea of compound interest. Um, compound interest, um, some of you might be familiar with it, some of you might not, so I just want to kind of recap here for a little bit. It says um, compound interest is when interest is paid on both the principal and, you see it would be and, the interest um, that an accountant has already earned. So again, that still might sound kind of wordy for you, so I want to bring it down even further. Um, principal means, um, the amount that you started with. So I'm gonna say, let's assume that you have $100 in the bank, for example, and you're getting, your parents or the bank is gonna pay you 10% um, for you keeping the money in the bank. So 10% of 100 is $10. So when you combine your, so this is what we call it, just interest. The interest is just $10. But when you combine the principal and the interest that you earned together, now you have 110. And when you take 10% of that, you're gonna get 11. But it's compound interest because you're taking the percent, you're taking um, $10 from the 10% uh, off of 100, which is $10, and then you're taking 10% off of the interest, which is $1, and now you have 11 total dollars. So you're taking interest um, off of the principal amount and the interest you earn, and it keeps happening that way as you go. For example, if I had $110 and now I'm adding $11, now I'm going to have 100 and $21. And that includes the principal, which is 100, and it includes $10 and $11 of just interest. And then again, if I times that by the 10%, that's now going to be uh, $12.10, which I'm now going to add to the 121, which is just going to keep on happening with that. It's called compound interest. An interest period is the length of time over which the interest is calculated. Sometimes you can do that. Um, um, every year, twice a year, three times a year, four times a year. Um, every week would be 52 times a year. Um, so that's going to be the interest period. And again, there'll be more talk about that as the lesson continues. Um, so here's example two. Suppose your parents deposited $1,500 in an account that pays 6.5% interest compounded annually, which means once a year when you were born. So they made this account for you when you were born. Find the account balance after 18 years. Again, we're going to go back to our Y equals a times b to the x. Um, in this case, the initial amount that we're starting with, because your parents deposited $1,500 in your account, that's what a is going to be, $1,500. Now, hopefully, we're assuming that this account that they made for you is going to be growing over time, not decreasing. And it's growing at 6.5% um, per year. So we're going to take, a, for our b factor, like we did before, you want to go 100% and then add the growth factor, which is 6.5%, and that's going to give you 106.5%, and either you divide by 100 or move the decimal back, and we're going to get our B value will be 1.065, and again, it's consistent with our formula from before because the B value is larger than 1. So now we're going to go ahead and write the equation out, Y equals the 1,500 times 1.065 to the x power, and x represents the years since you were born. So they started it when you were born, so this would be x equal to zero when you were born. And now, 18 years later, we're going to make the x 18. So we're going to get 1,500 
times 1.065 to the 18th power. So I'm going to go to my calculator here and we're going to get 1.065 raised to the 18th power, which is 3.107. And we're going to multiply that by 1500. And we're going to get 4,659 dollars and 98 cents. So after 18 years, the $1,500 that your parents put in an account for you has grown to um, $4,659.98. Um, hopefully, your account will be larger than that um, because you'll compound it more often. But uh, in this case, that's how much money will be in the account. So now you can try this one. Um, again, we're using the same example as example two, um, only now, what if the interest rate was 8% instead of the 6.5%? and then how much money would be in your account after 18 years. Okay, and so now we need to, um, kind of move this out of the way for you here, sorry. Um, we need you guys to write this chart down in your um, notes. It's important to have. Um, annual interest rate of 8%. This is just an example of, of how this works. I talked earlier about compounding. Compounding um, basically is how many times a year you're going to calculate the interest. If you're doing it annually, which is the easiest, that means that you're only going to compound it or you're only going to multiply it by the interest rate once a year. So if you do a compound it annually, it's one time per year and therefore 8% every year. But if you start compounding more than once a year, it basically means that you take your 8% annual interest, which is the interest for the whole year, and you divide it um, and then distribute it evenly among the periods that you're in. For example, semi-annually is like biannually, so it's twice a year. So in that case, you would take the 8% for the whole year and divide it by two, which would give you 4% for the first six months, and then the other 4% would come up the second six months. So you get 4% every six months. For a quarterly, that means four times a year, so you take your 8% divided by four, and now you're getting 2% which is a, it's a smaller percentage, but you're getting it more times a year. You're getting it every three months because, you know, three, six, nine, 12 months in the year, four times a year. And then, of course, monthly would be 12 times a year, so 12 periods. So you take the 8% divided by 12, and in this case, it doesn't go in evenly, but it's basically point, it's two thirds, so it's 0.6666 repeating, but you get that percent every month. So it's a smaller percentage, but it happens more often throughout the year. And that's important as we continue um, the examples and how to apply that. So here we have example three. Suppose the account in example two paid interest compounded quarterly instead of annually. Find the account balance after 18 years. So again, um, when we were doing that little guy, we're gonna go back to our y equals a times b to the x for this guy. And we know that the uh, a value is still going to be 1,500. We're using the same information from example two, um, which was 1500. And for our B value, we are going to take um, what we already had, which is the 100%. So to get B, we're going to take the 100%, and we're going to still add, um, what was the interest rate again? I don't remember. Um, for example, three, it was 6.5%. So we're going to take the 6.5%. But we're going to do something a little bit different in this case because of the compounding um, quarterly. We said earlier that quarterly means that you are going to do it four times a year. So I have to take my annual interest, which is 6.5%, and divide it by four because it's quarterly. So 6.5 divided by four is going to give me 1.625. So I have 100% plus 1.625, which is now 101.625. And then I move the decimal over, and I'm going to get a B value of 1.01625. That's a long number there, but it is necessary to have the 1.01625. So then over here, I'm going to go ahead and put that into my equation. So Y equals the 1500 from before, and now my B value is no longer going to be the 1.065, um, but now it's going to be 1.01625 to the x power. And 
um, it wants to know after 18 years. Now this also is going to be um, a problem because you're not going to put um, you're not going to put 18 in the place of x because x is um, how many times a year you're going to do this. So for every year of the 18, you're compounding it four times. So I have to take the 18 and times it by four, which is 72. So that means that I'm going to compound it 72 times in the in the 18 year span. Because in the first year, I'm not going to multiply it by the interest rate once. I'm going to multiply by the interest rate four times that one year. And then so the second year, I'm going to do it four times again. And that's already eight times for two years. So basically, you just take the years and times it by how many times you're compounding, which is four, and that gives me 72. So I'm going to replace my x value up here with the 72 to calculate the actual answer. So I'm going to go 1.01625 raise it to the 72nd power, which is 3.192, and times that by 1,500, and now my amount in the bank is $4,787.75. Now, you will recall um, that before we had said that we were going to end up with 4,600 and some dollars, so you can see that by compounding it four times instead of once a year, you've increased the amount in your account. All right, so now you guys can um, try this guy over here. Um, it's again based on the previous example, only this time instead of compounding quarterly, we're gonna do compounded monthly, and remember that that's 12 times a year. So you need to divide your interest rate by 12, and you also need to multiply your time of 18 years by 12. All right, and then of course, there's another example here of um, $200 in the bank and, and kind of you guys can work on that one. All right, so example four. Okay, to treat some forms of cancer, doctors use radioactive iodine. The half-life of iodine, 131, and I underlined this because a lot of times this confuses people. Um, you see that and you think that 131 has something to do with the problem, it doesn't. 131 is just the name of the iodine. So there's different types of iodine, so this is just the 131 type. So that's all just the name of the, of the iodine. And iodine is that stuff that they put on you when they're going to go draw blood and stuff. So it's basically a, a chemical. So doctors use radioactive iodine. The half-life of iodine, and by the way, half-life refers to um, how long it takes um, for a substance to reduce to half its size. So for example, if I started off with 10 pounds of something, how long will it take for it to only be 5 pounds of something? So it reduces to half. Okay, so it's called a half-life. So the half-life of iodine-131 is eight days. That means it takes eight days for the iodine to reduce to half of its original amount, okay? So a patient receives a 12 MCI, which is the um, abbreviation for millicuries. Um, again, just you know, a little bit of science here going on. Millicuries is a measure of radiation. So you don't have to be too concerned with that. It's just the unit of measure, like 12 inches, 12 feet. When you measure radiation, you measure it in millicuries. So there's 12 millicuries of treatment for this patient. So how much iodine is left in the patient 16 days later? And this is where we actually want to focus, the 16 days. Because we know that it reduces to the half in eight days. So 16 divided by eight is actually two. So in 16 days, um, this particular um, substance has um, shrunk to its half-life twice because it's divided by eight is two. That means that if I started off with 12, I divide that by two, and so eight days later, there's only six millicuries left, okay? Because that's half of 12. And then eight days later, which would be 16 days, then you divide that six by two, and now you're left with only three millicuries of the iodine substance left. So that's kind of how you do it with the half-life. So before we get into the decay stuff, I want to just make sure that you understand how to do half-life. So here's an example of how many half-lives of iodine-131 occur in 32 days. And then if you have a sample of 50, um, how much is left? So these are um, just uh, precursors to the actual biggie here. Um, we've talked about this before, is decay. Again, same formula as it was earlier at the beginning of the lesson, only now to call it decay, to, to classify it as decay, um, the base, the B number, is actually between 0 and 1. So it's bigger than 0, it's positive, 
but it's actually smaller than one, and that's called the decay factor. And so I'm gonna show you here an example of how to do that. So let me get this out of your way here, and then we'll, um, we'll call it, it's our last example here. So since 1980, the number of gallons of whole milk each person in the United States drinks each year has decreased 4.1% each year. So that number is important to us. Um, in 1980, which we're just going to call that x equal to zero, okay? In 1980, each person drank an average of 16.5 gallons. That's our A value. This is our A value. It's our A value because um, that's when, uh, the, when this started, so the beginning amount is 16.5. So um, in part A, it wants us to write the equation that, that models this uh, situation. So for A, we're going to put 16.5 gallons, and we need our B value. And our B value is going to be very similar to what it was in the previous lesson, only now, to calculate B, you start with the 100% like before, only this time you're subtracting the 4.1% because this is now decreasing, not increasing. So you're subtracting it. So if you take um, 400, sorry, not 400, if you take 100 and subtract 4.1, you get 95.9%. And again, divide by 100 or move the decimal two places over, and you actually get a value of 0 0.959. So again, we're going to plug in for B, we're going to plug in 0 0.959 to the x power. And this is consistent with our decay factor because 0.959 is smaller than 1 and yet larger than 0. So I use my equation to approximate the consumption uh, in the year 2000. So again, from 1980, the year 2000 is 20 years later, because 10 years would be 1990, and then 10 more years would be 2000. So here we know that x equals 20, because it's uh, started in 1980. So now we're just going to plug 20 into my equation here, 16.5 times 0.959 to the 20th power is 16.5 so 0.959 raised to the 20th power is 0 0.433, and that's times 16.5. And we get that y equals 7.143, OK? So basically, um, originally, um, consumption was 16.5 gallons per year. And because it was expected to decrease in the year 2000, it's decreased to only 7.1, um, 7.14 um, gallons per year. So it's decreased. So now you can try this last example is your uh, problem to do on your own. And I will see you in class and hopefully um, you've understood the lesson.